The Eastern Court Orthodox consider St. John of Damascus, who died in 749, to be a church father and one of the most important theologians in church history. The Catholic Church recognizes St. John of Damascus as a saint, a doctor of the church, and the last of the Greek fathers. This video will show that St. John of Damascus taught the Catholic view of St. Peter's authority, not the Eastern Court Orthodox view. Before we prove this, we should point out that since Eastern Orthodoxy is not a church but rather a loose collection of sects, people who claim to be Eastern Orthodox disagree with each other on many core issues including St. Peter's primacy, the primacy of a bishop of Rome, councils, and much more. But the most common view among the various Eastern Orthodox sects and theologians is that although St. Peter had a leading role as spokesman of the apostles, the Lord Jesus Christ did not give him a universal jurisdiction over the church or authority over the other apostles. For example, Vessel and Kessich, Eastern Orthodox theologian, who was dean of Vladimir's Orthodox Theological Seminary, stated, quote, In authority and power they, the twelve apostles, were equal. There were no degrees of power in the circle of the twelve, although there were degrees of intimacy or what we may call degrees of honor, end quote. Father John Maxwell, member of the Orthodox Church in America, stated, Although Peter was given the prominent role as the first of the apostles, he was always equal to the other apostles. The patristic witness is that no father of the church has seen in the primacy of Peter any title of jurisdiction or absolute authority in church government, end quote. Eastern Orthodox historian A. Edward Sachensky stated, Orthodox theology refused to grant him, St. Peter, any power not held in common by the other eleven, end quote. Now let's cite St. John of Damascus. We will see that he taught the Catholic position on St. Peter's authority, not the Eastern Orthodox one. You will almost certainly never hear these points from any supporter of Eastern Orthodoxy. In his homily on the Transfiguration, St. John of Damascus teaches that Peter had a unique authority and that it involved jurisdiction over the entire church. Referring to the Transfiguration, he states, quote, But why did he, Jesus, take along Peter and James and John? Peter, because he wanted to show him that the witness which he, Peter, had truly borne was now confirmed by the witness of the Father and to make credible his, that is, Jesus' own statement, that the Heavenly Father had revealed this to him, that is, to Peter. And because as president, he was also receiving the oars of the entire church, end quote. Here, St. John refers to St. Peter as the president who was receiving the oars or the rudder or the steering of the entire church. In the Greek, he uses pases tes ecclesias, which means of the whole church or of the entire church. According to St. John, St. Peter steers the whole church, which indicates that he possessed jurisdiction or authority to direct the entire church. St. John thus teaches the Catholic view of St. Peter's authority, not the Eastern, quote, Orthodox one. St. John of Damascus also repeatedly refers to St. Peter as praedros, here using the accusative form praedron, which means president or the one seated in the first place. This term signifies authority or jurisdiction over the church. We discussed the significance of the term in our video on St. Gregory Nazianzen, and we will come back to it. The next passage from St. John of Damascus states, quote, The Master has appointed you, Peter, as director not of tabernacles, but of the church throughout the whole world. Your disciples, your sheep, the good chief shepherd has put into your hands, end quote. According to St. John of Damascus, St. Peter is the director or organizer of the church throughout the whole world. Let me repeat that of the church throughout the whole world. In the Greek, we find the words ekklesias pen kosmiu, which means of the church of the whole world, or simply of the universal church. That's universal jurisdiction, folks. That's the Catholic position on St. Peter's authority, not the Eastern, quote, Orthodox one. St. John also says that the good chief shepherd has put the sheep into Peter's hands, which again indicates that Peter has jurisdiction over all the sheep. In light of these facts and the clear biblical evidence itself, one can see what a ridiculous lie it is when Eastern Orthodox heretics make preposterous and demonstrably false statements such as the following nonsense. Every single statement that's said to Peter is also said to all the other apostles. In the next passage, which is about the Transfiguration, St. John of Damascus refers to St. Peter as the supreme head of the New Covenant, and he compares him to Moses, the leader of the Old Covenant. Quote, Today, the supreme head of the new covenant, the one who proclaimed Christ as Son of God most clearly when he said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, sees the leader of the old covenant standing next to the lawgiver of both. End quote. Well, we know that Moses had authority from God over the people of Israel. See Numbers chapter 12 and Numbers chapter 16 for what happened to those who rebelled against that authority. St. Peter has a similar authority from Christ over the new covenant people of God, according to Greek father St. John of Damascus. The word translated here as supreme head is koruphaiatatos. It's important to consider the word. Koruphaiatatos is the superlative form of the word koruphaios. Koruphaios means chief or supreme or leader. 
It comes from karufe, which means the highest point of the skull or the top of the head. Now when you have an adjective, for example, the word fast, the comparative form of that adjective would be faster. The superlative form of fast, which expresses the highest degree or grade, would be fastest. Likewise, with the adjective tall, the comparative form would be taller, and the superlative form would be tallest. Now, the word that St. John uses about St. Peter's position, koruphaiatatos, is the superlative form of koruphaios, which, as we said, means chief or supreme or leader. St. John is thus saying that St. Peter is the chiefest or the supremest or the topmost in the church. That indicates that while there are various heads in the church, namely the other apostles or bishops, there is one supreme head, St. Peter. St. John's description of St. Peter as Kurufayatatos once again shows that he held the Catholic position and that he directly contradicted the heretical Eastern Orthodox one, which claims that no one apostle was above the others in authority. Christ is said to be the invisible head of the church, while his vicar, St. Peter, was the visible head after the resurrection. True successors of St. Peter as bishops of Rome, that is true popes, assumed the same office. In the next passage, St. John speaks of St. Peter receiving the keys in a unique way. He says that Christ, quote, appointed you keyholder to the kingdom of heaven, who bestowed on you the binding and loosing of the means of correction, end quote. St. John singles out St. Peter and refers to him in a unique way as the keyholder to the kingdom of heaven. All the apostles are promised the power to bind and loose in Matthew 18, but only St. Peter was promised the keys in Matthew 16. For why these two passages considered together further prove Catholic teaching on the papacy, we want to play a very short section from one of our other videos. Matthew 16.19, considered in conjunction with Matthew 18.18, 18, further demonstrates that St. Peter, the first pope, was given jurisdiction over all the apostles and the entire church. This also powerfully refutes the position of the Eastern Orthodox. Matthew 16 is well known. There Christ promises to give St. Peter, the first pope, the keys of the kingdom and says whatever you bind upon earth shall be bound in heaven, etc. But the Orthodox will often say, look at Matthew 18.18, 18, where Christ says the same thing, they claim, to all the apostles. By the way, Jesus gave the whole college of the apostles the ability to remit and retain sins and to bind and loose. Right? It's not just those who, it's not just Peter. You didn't give this to Peter and then tell Peter to give it to everybody else. Actually, that's in essence exactly what Jesus did, as we will see. Referring to the apostles collectively, Matthew 18:18 18, 18 says, Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. But far from contradicting the papacy, this verse actually just further illuminates the truth of the Catholic position and refutes the Eastern Orthodox one. Here's why. There's no mention of the keys in Matthew 18:18. 18, 18. The keys are only promised to St. Peter as we read in Matthew 16. In Matthew 16, we also learn that people bind and loose with the keys. Let me repeat that. People bind and loose with the keys. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, whatever you bind on earth, etc. Peter alone is given that with which one binds and looses. So when all the apostles are given authority to bind and loose, as we read in Matthew 18, 18, with what will they be doing that binding and loosing? With the keys, of course. But Peter alone is given them, Matthew 16. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the authority that all the apostles have to act is subject to Peter's distribution or restriction of the keys. Since he is given the keys with which the others act authoritatively, he can distribute the keys to certain people or he can take away the keys. Since they need the keys to act and he's the one who has them, their authority is subject to his. So contrary to what the Orthodox think, a careful consideration of these two passages together further proves the papacy, the teaching of Jesus Christ against which they rebel. In the next passage, St. John of Damascus again refers to St. Peter as praedros or president of the church, using the accusative form praedron. Quote, Peter, the one whom he, Jesus, in his foreknowledge, had foreordained to be a worthy president of the church. End quote. As our video on St. Gregory Nazianzen mentioned, praedros, which means president or the one who is seated in the first place, was a term applied to the position bishops held within their own diocese. As praedroi, or presidents, bishops had power to rule their own areas, despite what some modern-day Eastern, quote, Orthodox absurdly contend. So when St. John and others identify St. Peter as praedros of the entire church, that means that he had jurisdiction over the whole church, just like bishops have jurisdiction within their area. Our video on Eastern Father St. Gregory Nazianzen showed that he taught that the See of Rome was praedros, or president, over all other bishops and churches. That, of course, signifies universal jurisdiction, that's the Catholic position on the papacy. 
In the next passage, St. John of Damascus says, quote, He, Jesus, acquired her, the church, by his very own blood, but he entrusts her to you, Peter, as a most faithful servant, end quote. St. John uses the word enkeridze, which means entrust. It's a form of the verb enkeridzo. This verb is connected with the Greek word care, which means hand. Enkeridzo literally means I put into one's hands or I hand over. It was used to signify giving someone authority or control over something. According to St. John of Damascus, Jesus puts the church into St. Peter's hands. He hands it over to him. Thus, St. Peter has jurisdiction over the entire church. The facts in this video constitute more clear proof that the papacy is true. Those who reject it reject the Christian faith and work against Jesus Christ. Catholicism is true Christianity, while Eastern quote orthodoxy is definitely not. To be a true Christian and be saved, one must be a traditional Catholic, as our material explains.